I feel like I need to clarify how I feel about my marriage list. After all, it is my marriage list, and I think I should have some say-so in who should be on my list. First off, I would like to say that it was never my idea to have a marriage list. That was Brent Spiner and Vladimir Putin's idea. Brent Spiner was the first man on my marriage list. And I would say from December 1999 until September 2001, he was the only one I wanted to marry. Then 9-11 happened and I figured he would never come to me because the Jesuits were too powerful and I thought I needed a president in my life and I and I fell for Vladimir Putin. So then Vladimir Putin was my number one man from September 2001 to February, February 2006 when I reinstated Brent Spiner. And then Brent Spiner was, uh, I didn't kick off Vladimir Putin and, and when I was with Vladimir, I didn't really kick out Brent. It's just that I never thought I could, I was trying to find a man that I thought I had a chance of actually marrying because <laughs> I knew I was up against the Jesuits. And then when I was with Vladimir, actually the, the one who started the marriage list was Vladimir. In 2004, Steven Spielberg made a movie, a Silver Skies movie, based on my unfinished novel, Silver Skies. And I thought, I thought, wow, I can't believe it. he's making a movie out of my unfinished novel. And then Matthew McConaughey was the star, and Matthew read my book, Silver Skies, and he, and he fell in love with me. And he, uh, what happened was Vladimir had a debilitating heart attack. He almost died. And for a month, because of his heart attack, he was unable to make love to me. And so, at, even though I protested, Vladimir was worried that my needs wouldn't be met and he assigned Matthew McConaughey to be his temporary fill-in until he was able to make love to me again. This was like November 2004. Was it 2004? Maybe it was 2005. No, I think it was 2005. Yeah, it was November 2005. And after Matthew had brain-to-brain -brain loving with me for a month, he he asked Vladimir if he could be put on a, a waiting list, a, a husband's waiting list. He fell in love with me. And I said, oh, Vladimir, I said, you know, I said, Vladimir, I really don't think we should do this. And he says, oh, but Matthew, I says, I can't promise him that I'm going to marry him. It's not right, you know. But Matthew insisted, and so I said, okay, as long as he understands that I may not be able to actually marry him, so Matthew was the first one on the list. The list got started because of Matthew. And then Camilla always happened and all this. But anyway, so Matthew was the first. And then the Jesuits attacked him with Camilla in 2006. And he's had hell to pay because of her. So, okay. Then the next person, I believe, was Hugh Jackman. You say, how did that happen? Well... Brent was in the White House. This was like 2008, and I think he was talking to Barack Obama. And the, there was a Je Jesuit there who tried to shoot him with a gun. And Hugh Jackman stopped him, and he saved Brent's life. I think Hugh Jackman shot the Jesuit down. And so I felt to reward Hugh Jackman for his for protecting my husband. I made love to him. My my men said he Hugh would love it if you'd make brain to brain loving with him. I said, uh, you, sure, you said, you sure you don't mind? And Brent said, well, you know, he saved my life and there's nothing that would make him happier than to have brain to brain loving. So, and then I saw Hugh also in um, a movie that he was in and I he was very attractive in that. I forget what it was called. It was a fantasy with Meg Ryan, I think it was. Anyways, so I made love to him, and I bonded with him and uh, for about a month, and then he got added on. He said, I want to be on a marriage list. Okay, so starting around 2009, Matthew McConaughey got depressed because of Camilla Alves, almost to the point of suicide. And I hadn't made brain-to-brain -brain love to him since about 2005. 
So um, Gerard Butler started talking to me. I saw him in Fan of the Opera, and I thought he was sexy in Fan of the Opera. And I, he said, oh, she's noticed me in Phantom of the Opera. He said, and, um, he, and then I, so Brent decided, Brent, Brent and Vladimir decided to hook me up with Gerard brain to brain. And he turned out to be very sexy, very sexy lover. And basically I was, he was, he's a psychiatrist and he was making love to Matthew and he said you know what you need to make love to Matthew because Matthew's depressed and as a psychiatrist I determined that's the best way to help him so that's how and then Gerard I rewarded him for helping out Matthew and basically I tend to make love to guys that help out the men that are already on my marriage list <laughs> to reward them because they find that more, re more more satisfying than anything so that's how Gerard got on and then I think I had something with Vyacheslav Tikhonov in Russia because he was helping Vladimir with Russian government and he died. The Jesuits killed him. I think he was on the marriage list for a while. And then they just started adding him left and right. Oh, and then I started talking to some of the people that I like, Edward Prendergast from from my old school and Keith, Mor Keith Morgan, a, who's now a doctor and some people from my past that they felt, you know, that bonded with me. And that's how the marriage list got started. And then they just started adding more and more and more. And I said, you know, I said, you guys, you don't need to have this many men on my marriage list. You know, it's like, I actually see a big difference between brain to brain loving and actual loving. And you got to understand, I've read the Bible from cover to cover hundreds of times. I, I consider myself a missionary. I studied missions in Bible college. I'm a Bible college. I'm a Florida State University graduate, but I'm also a Bible college graduate. And I'm, I've got a deep interest in Jesus, the Bible, theology. In fact, my current book that I'm working on right now, I'm reading Things to Come by J. Dwight Pentecost. I'm doing a very deep study in Bible prophecy. I'm learning Hebrew so that I can make my main character believable. And also because he, um, he's going to be instrumental in leading the Jewish nation to, to, to their Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach. So I'm and say, Aleph, Beitin, Gimel, Daleth, Hethin. I'm trying to learn everything in Hebrew. It's hard language, but I'm, I'm going to try. So the long story short, I, I'm not really, when I found out there were like 10,000 guys in my marriage, I was like, oh my God, that's too many. That is too many. And, you know, I guess my, my men assumed that these guys understood that they may never, ever have sex with me. Because I, I, okay, let's just put it this way. You guys, I know, you know what the problem is? My men tend to worship me, Okay. They tend to worship me. I don't worship myself, but they worship me. They think I'm like a goddess. And I guess they think that any man who worships me would would be eligible for my marriage list. And we, when we lost Church of Gale, we lost our scanners, our, our emotion and mind reading scanners that do a really good job of analyzing motive. And so now we've got, they allowed some men on the marriage list who are evil, like Viggo Mortensen. And unfortunately, I've developed a rep, and maybe partly my fault because I pose for Playboy, but that's because, believe me, you know why I pose for Playboy? To help out Jesus. You say, what? Yes, because Jesus has a reputation as a cock blocker, and I'm trying to help him out because everybody knows that Jesus meets that I'm his favorite. So that's the main reason I do it because I don't, I want Jesus to lose his reputation as a cock blocker. That's why I pose for Playboy. But I don't give out my nudes unless there are people are willing to pay at Patreon because it's not wise to indiscriminately give out nudes because that Satan will be able to use that to hurt me. So anyways, you guys, since we no longer have our scanners, and since I never really was crazy about having a marriage list, and I never would have made love to Matthew and all these other guys, if my men didn't encourage me. 
It's not like I'm a it's not like I'm some sort of sex addict. In fact, just the opposite. <laughs> um, to me, there's more to life than having sex. I hate to disappoint you guys, but that's how I really feel. I mean, I got to bond with the guy emotionally, mentally, spiritually before I have sex with him. And if you guys have a problem with that, goodbye. Goodbye. And it's these Gail's men going their own way. You, you aren't going your own way. You meet 24, you were meeting 24 7 to gripe and complain about me. So you're not going your own way. And then you ended up having sex with my arch enemy, Lori McBride. You deserve the death penalty that you're getting right now. She's evil. She's the biggest mass murderer probably in all of human history, just about. And you're going to bed with her? You're not qualified for my marriage list. You never were. You say you might be brain control. Anyways, I have an idea here, guys. This is, since we don't have our scanners, I no, I, no man can be on my marriage list unless they've read the Bible from cover to cover and have also read Bible for Tribulation Saints from cover to cover. And Brent, I want you to make up a test. And you might say, well, I'm on your marriage list and I haven't read the Bible from cover to cover. Okay, I'm going to make allowances for you. I will give you up to two years to read the Bible from cover to cover. And you need to be making progress along that line. If you are reading it to, reach, to read the Bible from cover to cover, then kick them off, guys. Kick them off. Like, I, have, I seriously doubt that Viggo Mortensen's read the Bible from cover to cover. <laughs> I can tell by the way he is, or most of these, these ex-men who are complaining. Because if usually people don't read the Bible unless they love God, okay? That's usually the case. And they obviously don't love God because they're more interested in satisfying their lust than in living a God-honoring life and honoring love. See, if you don't, if you aren't fair and just in your dealings with your fellow human being, I mean, come on, get real, guys. You expect me to have sex with 10,000 guys? Ugh. I don't know very many women that would find that very uh, appealing. <laughs> oh, we're hot. We're, we're ripped. We're the Hollywood stars. You know what? I could care less how famous you are. I don't care about your money. I don't care about your fame. All I care about is that you're a real man. And a real man will read the Bible. And, you, and a real man would love me, not just my body, but my soul and my spirit. And if you haven't read Bible for Tribulation Saints, which is very important, recent history of, between what happened to me and my men, you haven't read that. You are not qualified to be on my marriage list. Now, let's say you don't need to read it because you already know everything that's in there. Then I guess you can skip that. But I want you to make a test, Brent, and test these men and make sure they understand everything that's in Bible for Tribulation Saints. That's important to know. And everything that's in the Bible, that's important to know. In other words, I want to make sure that anyone who's on my marriage list under, has read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and has read Bible from Tribulation Saints starting from December 2011 till the last entry in there, which was January 2017. Okay? If they aren't interested in my life, then why in the world do they want to go to bed with me? That isn't love. That's lust. Sex is more than two bodies coming together. It's a union of of souls and spirit and mind, intellect, emotion. If you don't understand that, you're a dud in bed, and I don't want you. Okay, so that's it, okay? Um, I just want, I don't want anyone, and another thing, I want you to take a vow, and they need to take this vow at least once a month under lie detection. I promise that I will do my best to help Gail in her service to Jesus and in her opposition to Satan and his followers like Lori McBride. And that if I break this vow, I'm worthy of death. I want them to say that. And if, and if they don't pass that, out they go. 